Right. In this video, we are going to be reviewing how to do solve linear and absolute value equations. Now, um, at a later date, I am going to be showing you something with the absolute value equations. And one thing I am not doing in this chapter is solving the absolute value inequalities because we are eventually in chapter two going to get into how do you graph uh, functions, especially absolute value ones. And we will use the graph to help us um, solve the inequalities. But you still should know how to not only solve it um, graphically, but also solve it algebraically. So I'm going to be taking a look at the algebraic side today, um, and then we will get into the graphing side next time. Now, this right here should be um, hopefully at this point pretty Pretty good. I mean, there's some tricks that are nice to know, but I would think that most of you at this point are very good with solving uh, linear equations. A couple of things here, and all of these examples here have a something that usually someone gets caught up in. So I'm going to show you where the common mistakes are. And perhaps you might even want to try and do the problem on your own uh, before I give you the problem uh, or the the ex explanation why, um, but I'll kind of leave that up to you. In this first example here, we can see that we're solving for k, and the biggest problem that people have is they like to put together that one and that negative eight. We cannot do that, okay? We cannot combine those. That's a big no-no. When we're doing order of operations, um, we do What's ever in parentheses first, then we multiply, then we divide, and then we add and subtract. We cannot do that right here. However, we can distribute that negative 8. So I've got a 39 minus 5k equals 1 plus 64 and then plus 8k. Now that we can do, and that's going to be a good start for us. Now if I go ahead here, I um, always want to try and combine any like terms if that is possible. So putting the 1 and the 64 together. And now we're going to try and get the k's on the same side. I am a freak of nature and typically like to bring everything over to my left hand side. So I'm going to subtract an 8k from both and that's going to give us 39 plus 13k is equal to 65. I'm going to subtract 39 from both sides, and rather than making some sort of mistake, I'm going to double check here, clear that out, what was I doing? Um, 65 minus 35, so 65 minus 30, oh shoot, I don't know, was that right? Yes, 26, okay, so we got 26 here, and go ahead and we can divide by the negative 13. All right, so we should get that k is equal to negative 2. Now I can go ahead and I can plug that back in and see how we do with it. All right, number 2, we've got a fraction that's going on here. Fractions, yes, they are friends, but a lot of times we get a little scared by them, so we get rid of them right away. The fact that we're dividing by negative 7, go ahead and multiply both sides here by negative 7, and that would cancel that out for us. So now we get 4y minus 7. Now, a lot of times people think that they have to distribute negative 7 to the 4y into that negative 7. No, those right there, they're factors of each other. They're going to cancel each other out. And that's what's leaving us behind with that 4y minus 7. Now, over on the right, we do. Um, so then, let's see what's going to give us negative 1. And, oh shoot, one second here. Sorry, I thought I did something, but I'm okay here. So, okay. Um, okay, so negative 7 times 1, that's negative 7. All right, then negative 6y times negative 7, so that's going to be positive 42y. 42y, okay. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and solve. So I'm going to get my like terms on one side, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 42y. Now, some of you might like to subtract the 4y, and that's totally fine. I support either one of those. So this is going to give us negative 38y minus 7 is equal to negative 7. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add 7, and 
we get negative 38y equals 0. Now, a lot of times people like to say, oh, there's no answer in this case. No, we do. So that, now I have to divide by negative 38. And 0 divided by negative 38 is, is the answer. Uh, and the answer is that y is equal to 0. So we're okay with that situation. All right, so going on to number three, it's down here. We've got some fractions to work with. Um, so sometimes fractions are our friends, which I think they are, but for some people they struggle with them. And um, in this situation here, we can go ahead and we can distribute. And this one's going to be actually not a not that tough of one to keep it in fraction form. I do need to distribute that four thirds over on the right hand side. I'm not distributing the seven W, but I could technically distribute the negative one if I wanted to. I'll probably be less likely to make some mistakes right there. So let's go four thirds times nine W. So that's going to give me 12 W. Now four thirds times 51. So four thirds times 51 gives me 68. So this is going to give us negative 68 equals 7w. So negative 1 times 68 is a negative 68. Negative times a negative 5w is a positive 5w. Um, you know, in the world of pre-calc, you know, hopefully you guys are to a point where we can feel comfortable solving um, if you have questions about something I did, again, make sure you ask. All right, so here I've got a situation. I'm going to try and get my variables on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 12 W. Uh-oh, what's happening here? Well, the W's are canceling out, and we are left with negative 68 equals negative 68. Now, that right there is a true statement. This right here, because those variables are saying are canceling out, we have all real numbers are going to be solutions to this equation. Now, going back to algebra again, um, if I were to graph out these two separate lines right here on a coordinate plane, what's going to happen is we're going to see that these two lines fit directly on top of each other, making every single point a solution. Now let's say that was negative 68 is equal to a positive 68. That right there would not be true. There you'd have an example where we could work with no solution in that case. All right. All right, number four, um, I do want to explain another option that you do have if you don't like the fraction route. Um, one thing you can do is you can divide by a common denominator. Now, this is going to make this a little, oh, actually, we can suppose it's 12. Oh, that's actually not that bad of one to do. Um, this here, I mean, you can distribute that three halves, and it's going to actually give us really nice numbers to work with. But if you wanted to get rid of something, like what you could do is when you look at that denominator, say it's like a two right there, if you were to multiply both sides of the equation by two, that helps get rid of fractions for us. But here, I'm going to actually go ahead and multiply that out because we're going to be okay. 3x plus 11 minus x. Oh, which actually I'm going to simplify that left-hand side right away. 3x minus x, so that's going to give us 2x plus 11. All right, 3 halves times 4 thirds. Here, I'll multiply straight from. So 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 3 is 6. So 12 divided by 6, so that's going to give us 2x. 3 halves times 12. Um, 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18, so plus 18 plus 7. So you might need to grab for a calculator on some of that, um, but maybe try and challenge yourself a little bit. All right, so 28 plus 17, that's going to give us 25. So here's a situation now where if I subtract 2x from both sides, those x's are canceling out, and we're left with 11 equals 25. And that does not hold true. So here we have no solution. 
Now, if we were to graph the left and the right hand side of this equation, these two lines would be parallel to each other, meaning that they would never cross over. All right, another skill you should be uh, comfortable with doing is solving the equation for a specific variable. Um, this just makes it easy for us to rework things, move stuff around. And so for number five here, we're solving for J. Notice where J is. J is up down here in my denominator, so I need to get that out of there right away. So I'm going to go ahead here. I'm going to multiply both sides here by 3J. And those would cancel. We would have 8H is equal to 18KJ. And now just to get that J by its side, self, we can go ahead and divide by 18K. And there we have it. Now we can just simplify. So 18, 8 and 18, we could divide both of those by uh, 2. Okay, yes. So then we could get 2, so 4H divided by, uh, divide that by 2, so that's 9K would be equal to j. All I'm doing here is I am trying to get the variable j by itself. Um, in something like number six right here, and we're trying to solve for b1, now you could go ahead and distribute. Here I want to show you that trick though with um, the fraction. So I've got that one half. Something that's really cool to do is if I multiply both sides by two, this will give me 2a is equal to h times b1 plus b2. Now, a lot of us like to go ahead and we try to distribute that h, but in this situation, actually, I, I don't need to do that quite yet. h is being multiplied by this product right here, and so opposite multiplication is division. So I could divide both sides by h. So 2a over h is equal to b1 plus b2. And now just subtract a B2. Now, this is not the only option for this one. So here B1 would be equal to 2A over H minus B2. So that is an option. If you were to distribute here, um, another option you could have here is 2A minus um, H B2 all over H. Um, that's another option we could have Oopsie. for this guy. So just solving, um, doing some different things to get there. I'm going to move on to the next part here, which is the absolute value. I'm right, going to real quickly go back to Algebra 2 and Algebra 1 for a moment. Remember, like, when you're solving absolute value, um, you get the absolute value of 5. Well, that equals 5. Absolute value of negative 5 is equal to 5. Absolute value is the distance away from zero. Five is five units from zero. Negative five is five units from zero. So now when you ask yourself the question, this is what you need to think of. The absolute value of what number equals, say, seven, okay? What numbers are seven units away from zero? Well, yes, seven is one answer, but there are two solutions that you have to worry about, all right? So now, up at the top, reminder to you that when you're solving an absolute value equation, first of all, isolate the absolute value, okay? That's what you need to start by doing. You need to figure out what number from zero are you trying to work from. Now, number nine, it's already doing that for us. We've got the absolute value on the left-hand side, and we have 98 on the right. Step number two, create two cases. I can't express how important that is. That's when the graphing will come in handy for us, but you need to do two different ones. Now, this is the absolute value. We're asking, essentially here, what two numbers are 98 units away from zero? So that means that negative 2 minus 10w can equal a positive 98, or negative 2 minus 10w can equal a negative 98. Negative 98, positive 98, they are both possibilities for us. 
add 2, so negative 10w is equal to 100. Divide by 10, w equals negative 10. That right there is one solution. On the other side here, if I add 2, so negative 10w is equal to negative 96. Divide that by 10, and we get w is equal to 9.6. Okay, we have two different solutions that we have for our problem. Number 10 here. I do not have the absolute value isolated yet. To do that, we have to add 6. So now you have the absolute value of 2b plus 4. That is equal to 20. Now, step 2. Create two separate cases. 2b plus 4 can equal a positive 20, or 2b plus 4 can equal a negative 20, two different options. Subtract 4, so 2b is equal to 16, and b is equal to 8. On the other side here, 2b, subtracting 4, so equals negative 24, and divide by 2, so b can equal negative 12. Okay. Now, one thing I should be doing here, too, is, I mean, I can go ahead and check to make sure that all of these solutions do work, because there are chances where it does not work. And in both of these situations, we are going to be good, okay? Um, I'm going to take you down to 11, and then let me try and do number 12 on its own. So with number 11, you got to get that absolute value, so it's all by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides here by negative 4. And so the absolute value of 7 minus a of uh, 4. So what, that's 9, right? So that gives us 9. So now the two cases, 7 minus a equals positive 9, or 7 minus a equals a negative 9. Subtract 7, negative a equals 2, and now divide by negative 1, so negative 2 is one solution. Subtract 7, so negative a is equal to, what, negative 16, and divide by negative 1, so a is equal to 16. We've got those two different possibilities there. And as I go back into my problem here, so, um, you know, I'm going to go back up to the top here. So 7 minus 2. So 7 minus a negative 2 is 9. Absolute value of 9 is 9. 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. So yes, that works in 16. 7 minus 16 is negative 9. Absolute value of negative 9 is 9. 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. So there we have it. Perhaps why don't you go ahead and try and see if you can do number, oops, sorry, here. Uh, see if you can do number 12. All right, now if you came up with negative 23 eighths and 11 eighths, you've been listening to what we've been doing in this video, but you might be looking at seeing that there's the answer is no solution. The thing is that you did not go back and check your answer. And there's a little bit of an issue, and some of you might have found this right away, but when we went ahead and added the 9, divided by 2, ooh, what happened here? I'm um, sorry. Go back here. There we go. Notice what happened here. And more specifically, let's look at this guy. Can the absolute value ever equal a negative? No. That is why there is no solution to this problem. Okay. Absolute value can never equal a negative number. When you're talking about distance, distance always has to be positive. So if I go and I, anyway, kind of ignore that fact, and I go back now and I try and plug things back in, we're going to see here that they do not work and that there is no solution. So make sure you are watchful of that. Now, some of the last ones here, um, I'm going to probably do 13, 14, and see if you can do uh, 15 on your own. But like earlier problem in this video here with number 13, please don't subtract 1 and negative 10. Um, we can't do that. However, I can subtract a negative 1. So, oopsie. So negative 10 times the absolute value of 9r plus 3 is equal to negative 30. Now when I divide by negative 10, 
notice we're going to be okay because that's going to take that negative 30 and turn it into a positive 3. Now we set up our two cases, 9r plus 3 equals 3, and we have 9r plus 3 equals a negative 3. We can set up those two cases. Subtract 3, 9r equals 0, and divide, and we get 0. Here I'm going to subtract 9r equals negative 6. Divide by 9, and r is equal to negative 2 thirds. So here, as I go back in and I plug those answers back into the problem, we are going to see that both of these end up being solutions. What happens if you have variables that are not inside the absolute value, but they're on the outside? Well, I'm going to go through the same thing here. Um, the absolute value is isolated, so that's good news as far as our two cases go. 5a plus 8, well, that can equal the positive. 3a minus 10, or the 5a plus 8 could equal the negative 3a minus 10. Not going to do so much for the right, the right hand side, or sorry, left hand side is going to be pretty nice for us. So we get the 5a plus 8 can equal 3a minus 10. Bring my a's over, so 2a plus 8 equals negative 10, or sorry, negative 10. Subtract 8, so 2a is equal to negative 18, and a is equal to negative 9. Over on the right-hand side, you need to subtract. You're doing the opposite of everything, so minus 3a plus 10, okay? So add the 3a, so 8a plus 8 equals 10. Subtract 8, 8a equals uh, 2. And then we can simplify here and divide by 8, and we get 1 fourth. So going back here and checking to see if our solutions work, negative 9. So I do need to be careful about this. So 5 times negative 9, that's 40, negative 45. Let's do this here. So negative 45 plus 8. I'm trying to see if the absolute value of that equals... 3 times negative 9 minus 10. So 3 times negative 27 minus 10. So negative 37, which negative 45. Um, yeah, so yeah, okay, that's negative. Yeah. So notice right here that this is negative 45 plus 8. So that, and that's going to give us negative 37, but the absolute value of that makes it a positive 37. So negative 9 is negative 37. How about the 1 fourth? Um, so I've got the absolute value of 5 times 1 fourth. So let's go 5 fourths plus 8. And is that going to be equivalent to 3 times 1 fourth? So I'm going to go ahead and 3 fourths minus 10. Uh, three fourths minus ten, so that's going to give us a negative nine point two five, and eight plus five fourths is going to give us is that a negative? Let's go double check here. Is that negative or positive? Yeah, it's negative. And this here would give us positive nine point two five. The absolute value that would be positive nine point two five. So those aren't equal to each other, so that also would not work. Now, I'm going to check something real quick. I just want to double check, but yeah. Here we get, even though it works out as a problem here, but we get, end up with no solution for those two problems. All right, so what I am going to encourage you to do real quick is try and see if you can do 15 and 16, pause the video, and then start it back up when you are outside. All right, here we are with 15 and 16. So take those, take a look at them. Notice that both of those answers for both of them do work. So we are looking at 15 and 16. Both have two answers to go along with them. All right, there we are. Again, let me know if you have any questions.